All right, implementation intention. That sounds like a big fancy term that maybe you want to run away from. But trust me, this is going to make all the difference. The question we have to start with that when we think about implementation intention is why aren't goals enough? Why is it enough just to set a goal for yourself and then you will pursue the goal, right? When you think about self-control as being something about setting a goal and then achieving the goal. And oftentimes being smart about what goal you set can really help you. But just having the goal isn't always enough. So what can go wrong? So there are a few things that can go wrong and mean the difference between successful self-control and goal achievement and self-control failure and the failure to achieve your goals. One of these is that you might forget to take action. It's one thing that you have a goal in mind, but it's another thing to actually use yourself and behaviors to move toward the goal. And oftentimes we just forget to actually do things we need to do to achieve our goals. We can also fail to size opportunities. There are all sorts of opportunities in everyday life that we could use as a springboard into action that will help us achieve our goals. In the case of dieting, for example, there is all sorts of opportunities for us to get more exercise, to walk instead of drive, all sorts of things that we could do to promote our health goals. But we might fail to take those opportunities and we also might have second thoughts at the last second. We might have every good intention, we might know what our goals are, but when it comes time to actually resist eating that donut, sometimes we have second thoughts and it's not enough for us to help create behavior that will help us achieve our goals. So to clarify what we are talking about here, goals are especially what you want to achieve. That's all. It's just what you want to end up having accomplished. So your goal might be to lose 10 kilograms. So that doesn't tell you anything about how you are going to do it. It's just telling you what the end goal is at the end of a successful goal pursuit. I will have lost 10 kilograms. Maybe your goal is to get more exercise. Again, it's not specifying how you are going to accomplish the goal. It's just what you want to end up doing get more exercise and on and on and on. So when you talk about goals, all we are talking about is what you want to achieve. And like we said, just knowing what you want to achieve may not be enough to help you actually achieve it. This is where implementation intentions come in. These are the behaviors you intend to take and the context in which you intend to take it. Basically, what implementation intentions do is they translate your goal into a set of concrete behaviors that you know what they involve. You know when you are going to do them. You train yourself to see the opportunity to engage in a behavior that will help you reach your goal and then you take the opportunity. That's what these intentions are all about. It's really just clarifying for yourself when you are going to do the stuff you need to do in order to achieve your goal and to do so in advance. So this is to get more specific with it. Isn't even the information that specifies the what, the when and the where. This intention will help you ideally figure out what the behavior is you want to do and when you are going to be able to do it and the context in which you will be able to do it. All of these things help clarify what the behavior will be for you. Okay, so when you form the intention, we'll go into more detail on forming the intention in the next lecture. But in general, step one is to ask yourself, when is the action you will take? What is it that you want to do? That will help you reach your goal. So in the case of dieting, the action might be eating more fruits and vegetables or even more specifically eating a banana for breakfast. That's the action that you are going to take to help meet your goal. But how are you going to know when to take it? The example I just gave you 
with the banana for breakfast. It might be a little more obvious, but maybe the action you are going to take is to drink more water. Well, you have to create the opportunity to do that. You have to find times when you can cue yourself to actually accomplish that activity. So how will you know when to take it? Well, maybe when you walk by a drinking fountain that will prompt you to take a drink of water, you are forcing yourself to seize an opportunity by seeing in advance what the opportunity might be. And these intentions follow if-then kind of structure. If you are, if you come, some cue, something in your environment, some time of day, some thought that you have, anything that reminds you to take this action, you should identify in advance. So that if you encounter that thing or thought or place, then you will react with some particular activity. So for example, like I just said, if I pass a drinking fountain, then I will take a drink for five seconds. This is an implementation intention that helps you actually achieving your goal of being healthier, staying hydrated, etc. It's a concrete behavior. Taking a drink for five seconds and specifies in advance when you are going to do it. So now anytime you pass a drinking fountain, know that you have formed this intention. You have practiced it, you know about it, anytime you pass a drinking fountain. It's going to remind you, this is the moment where I can seize this opportunity and do healthy behavior. Say someone wants to eat less or eat less calorie loaded food, they might form this intention. If someone offers me a food sample, for example, at a store, then I will say, no, thank you. It can be as simple as this. You know now in advance that this might be a time when your self-control crumbles. You know that when people offer you a food sample in the grocery store, you cannot resist. But if in advance you make a, a vow to yourself, then anytime this happens, it's going to remind you what your intention is. It's going to remind you to respond with a pre determined response that is just saying no thank you. Let's have another one. If I think about having pizza, then I will ignore this thought and think what is healthier. Again, this was a slightly different version of an implementation intention, but it accomplishes the same idea. There is a cue, something that prompts you to take action. And in this case, it's just a thought that you have. And so you respond to that thought with a predetermined action, ignoring the thought and instead considering what the healthy or healthier alternative is. So again, you might know in advance that you have thoughts about pizza. You crumble, you crave it, and you end up just having it. But if you know that in advance, now you can monitor yourself for this, and anytime, and anytime it comes up, you know what to do. You say, nope, not going to go with that thought. And instead, I'm going to think about what the healthier option is. So again, it forces you to overcome potential problems. This also hint at the third component of forming an implementation intention, which is that you should know in advance what obstacles might keep you from taking action and what you are going to do about them. So again, if you know that you don't act in line with your goals under certain circumstances, then form an implementation around it. If that comes up, what are you going to do about it? Or you know what else is going to get in the way of you taking action in a way that will serve your broader goals from intentions around this as well. Okay, so it's one thing for me to say that you should do this, but why are they effective? Well, like I said, it forces you to form mental links between scenarios and good responses in your mind. When you create an implementation intention, you are basically teaching your brain to go Anytime I see this, I will do this. That's a real simple rule. 
that you can follow and if you design it in advance then your brain knows what to do anytime you come across that situation and you practice it rehearse it you remind yourself what your intentions are every now and again and your brain continues to hold on to that rule that you are setting for it and really what it's doing it's giving you a clear plan of action you know now you don't have to think every single time you are tempted you have already created what your response will be and all you have to do then is execute the plan in response to the cue if you are in doubt of how effective this can be consider this in 2006 some researchers published a meta-analysis which is a combination of different studies to see whether something is really really powerful or not and this one used 94 separate studies and almost 8,000 individual people to show that just guiding people to a form of simple implementation intentions increases their self-control capacity by a time so it's clear that these things are effective because it gives you a clear plan in at once and it's tailored specifically to your particular concerns and times when you might falter so as a strategy and we will go into more next time but from concrete if then implementation intention to keep you on track this is a concrete simple way for you to make a self-control plan and it's a way that research has proven is effective in the next lecture we will talk a little bit more about how you may form this if then implementation intentions in a way that is tailored to your own goals if you enjoyed this video and want to hear from me again be sure to hit the subscribe button before you go if you have any questions comment below give me a like and just follow me to don't miss one of my videos on youtube instagram and facebook to your success your health and wealth mentor